I'm going to test the pressure vacuum breaker, the PVB. I am Bart Starr. I'm here at the Viking 2 Backflow Training Center in Albuquerque, New Mexico. So let's get started. The first thing we have to do are those steps we take prior to testing any type of backflow preventer. Notify, identify, inspect, and observe. We will notify the facility that we are there to do our backflow test. We will identify the backflow preventer. We'll document the physical location at the facility. We'll also document the make, model, size, and serial number of our PVB. And we will also document the application, the type of system that our PVB is supplying water to. Then we'll inspect it for correct application, orientation. We'll also make sure that we have all of our components necessary to do our backflow test. And we have our two shutoff valves and we have our two test ports. We have test port number one on the inlet shutoff valve and then we have test port number two on our outlet shutoff valve. Since test port number one is on our inlet shutoff valve, that tells us that our direction of flow is going this way. Then we'll observe for any kind of safety hazards or leaks. Leaks from our air inlet valve or uh, leaks from the test ports as well. I'm going to use this gauge. This is the Midwest Model 847 5 valve differential pressure gauge. On the gauge itself, we have bleed valves up on top and then we have our three control valves on the bottom. This is our high side bleed valve. This is our low side bleed valve and our high side control valve, low side control valve, and this is our bypass or the vent, some people call it as well. We're going to be taking our readings off of our differential gauge here. This is our line pressure gauge. More on this in a little bit. So the first thing we're going to do is flush the test ports. We're going to flush our test ports in direction of flow, beginning with test port number one. Connect our hoses to our test ports. And we'll flush test port one first. So we'll open test port one, flush it, full open, and close. And now test port two, full open, flush, and close. Take our hoses off. We have two steps for testing the PVB. The first step is checking the air inlet valve opening point. Step two is testing the differential pressure across our check valve. So in step one, <clears throat> air in the valve opening point, we have to make sure that our gauge and the PVB are at the same level. So we're a little high here. Let's bring our gauge down a bit. Right about there. there you go. That's, that's a pretty good level there. Also, <clears throat> some jurisdictions require the use of a bleed off valve assembly. It's not required here in our jurisdiction, so it's important to check with your local requirements. So in step one, <clears throat> the air in the valve opening point, we've already done our flushing. Now let's prepare our gauge. We're going to open our high side bleed valve, and then we're going to close the rest of our gauge valves. Close the high and finally close the bypass. We will connect a hose from test port number two to the high side control valve. Now we'll open test port two fully. And now we are bleeding out of our bleed line on the gauge. The next step is to stop the bleeding. So we will close the high side bleed valve. 
gauge is pegged. Now we'll close both shutoff valves. We'll close the number two shutoff valve first. And now the number one shutoff valve. In this step, the air inlet valve opening, the air inlet valve has to open whenever pressure in the body is at no less than one pound. We're gonna have to bleed the water out of the body through the high side bleed valve. To record our gauge reading, there's a couple different ways you can record your gauge reading. Some people watch for a splash coming out of the air inlet valve. In, in my opinion, the most accurate way to record your gauge reading is to watch for the sudden drop of the needle down to zero. So let's begin opening the high side bleed valve. We will start bleeding water out of the body. We'll open the bleed valve just enough to get the line pressure gauge to start falling. Once we see this gauge starting to fall, then we won't open the bleed valve anymore. We'll wait a minute. <clears throat> so let's crack the high bleed. Okay, our line pressure gauge has started to fall. All right. Now the differential gauge has dropped a little bit. And what we're watching for is for the needle to make a sudden drop to zero. Once it does that, we'll record that gauge reading. Speed it up a little bit. about one six, one five, one four, right at 1.4. That's a good gauge reading because our minimum opening point is 1.0. To wrap up this step, we'll close test port two and open shutoff valve number one to repressurize our PVB. Step two is differential pressure drop across our check valve. We'll reprep our gauge. We'll open the high side bleed valve. We're going to leave shutoff valve number two closed, and we're going to move our high side hose over to test port number one. Next, we'll open test port number one fully. And we're bleeding out of our bleed line on the gauge. Next is to stop the bleeding, we'll close the high side bleed valve. Okay, that'll peg the gauge. Next is close shutoff valve number one. To get our check valve reading, we're gonna open test port number two fully all the way. And we're gonna record our gauge reading when water stops dripping completely from test port number two and our gauge stops dropping and holds steady for us. Okay, we've about stopped on test port number two and our gauge is holding right at 2.6. That's a good gauge reading because our minimum for our check valve is 1.0. For test completion, we'll close both test ports one and two.
disconnect our hose from test port one. We will open shutoff valve number one first. And now shutoff valve number two to pressurize our system. We'll now open all the gauge valves on our gauge, drain it down. And that concludes this test. I hope this helps you out. Thanks for watching.